Welcome to the Business Client Section's full tutorial. To begin, we're going to look at the first thing you'll see when you come into the program. Normally the program will start with the Business Client Section and it will highlight this handshake icon labeled Client Info in the upper left hand corner within the dashboard. This will show you the main client's screen and information. It will also show you the contact that is currently the default contact for this company in the lower right hand corner. If there is more than one contact for this company, you can easily switch to a different name temporarily by clicking the little picture of the two people found in the blue bar area, and this will drop down the rest of the names that are on this company, so you could switch to see a different contact's name and information. Above this, you'll find that there are services provided here, which you can utilize to track which services you do or don't do for this particular client. Note that when you click a checkbox here once, it will give you a black check mark, a second time will make it go gray, and a third time will clear it out. As an example, some people tend to use a black check mark for a service of which they currently do provide, and a gray check mark to exemplify a service of which they would like to provide for this client in future. If you're ever looking for client information, you can easily find clients by using the Find Client button in the dashboard on the left hand side. There are two search functions in here which you can utilize. The first one assumes you know the name of the client you're looking for. So as you type out the name, it will try to predictively figure out who you're looking for. It hopefully will make it much simpler and quicker to get to your client's details. If you don't know the name of the client you're looking for, and let's say for example, you've been given the business number of the client and then asked for information on them, you can type any piece of information in the second search field that might be on the client's file and you should get a match for it as long as it's in your software. For example, if I take the first four digits of this client's business number and then I click find, you'll see that it's given me a match found with this client's business number at the top here. So the concept of this is that as long as the information is in the program, you should be able to get a match with what you've typed in with your search result. If you're ever looking to edit client information, you can use the edit pencil on the left hand side. This will allow you to change the details of the client's information, add any personnel to this company so you can keep track of the staff and any other individuals that might be associated with this company. The next tab over is called Associated Professionals. It gives you six fields of information which you can utilize for these titles. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but if you do, keep note that they will actually show up on the client's file once something has been typed into one of these fields. Finally, the other tab allows you to modify up to five custom fields in case you need a spot for information that is specific to your company. The example that I've done here previously is I've clicked Define Custom Fields and I've changed the first one to be called BIN Number. When I change it, it changes the name for all business clients for that one custom field. Now what I'm going to utilize this for is I'm going to say that there's a filing cabinet in my office which contains hard copy client information and those copies are associated to my clients by a particular number. So in this case, instead of keeping that in some sort of Excel spreadsheet, a Rolodex, or a ledger of some sort, this may be a better system because as you might notice, the bin number appears right away on the client's file. So if we use that find function, we know exactly what we're looking for and it takes us no time to get there. Lastly, there's a note section on the client's field which also does show up on the client's file. In general, we normally suggest when putting information in this field, try to put in information that pertains to the client that must be seen every time that you talk to this client. For example, maybe there is a certain set of procedurals that you must follow when you're doing this client's work or something will go wrong. Or maybe this client is from somewhere in the world where certain parts of the language you speak may end up offending them if you're not careful. Obviously that's very important information and you'll want to see that as soon as you look at their file. For further information and details that may not be seen as frequently, we suggest to go to the scratch pad in the upper right hand corner. Both of these fields you've just seen have no limit to the amount of detail that you can type in them. The difference being is the scratch pad does not show up right away on the client's file. You have to go into the scratch pad to see the information in here. Also note that in the scratch pad there is a button here called date stamp, which when clicked will take today's day, year, time, and the person logged in entering the note so you can leave whatever information you'd like. We do not suggest, however, to leave things like phone calls or communications from your clients in here because there is a better location for this. For communications and other things that you'd like to add to your clients' files, which maybe you'd like to search up quicker in future, we suggest to go to the More Info section. This section is found 
beneath the client's name in the upper left-hand corner of the program and also pertains to the lower right-hand corner of my program with the blue circle and the question mark in it and the phone icon. The blue circle pertains to the upper half and the phone icon for the lower section. What these are designed to do is to allow you to hopefully reduce the amount of internal communication you have in your office as well as give you an easier system to be able to track things that might be missing for your clients and call those things up very quickly and also to assign them to each other within the office. For a full detailed description on this, refer to the More Info tab. It will describe to you exactly how you can utilize it and how you can utilize it best within your office. As a quick example, what I've done is I've previously gone to the communication entry and I've clicked the button beside the drop down menu to add some common types of communication services to my system. These will then allow me to easily select from a drop down menu so I don't have to type in what the communication type is every time I get something from a client. Then I can put the information in my system and save it to the client's file. If you'd like to, you can also assign these to other users so they'll pop up on their screen once they log into the program. There is also a list of items in here on the left hand side which can be utilized to track other things that you might need from your clients. Generally what people will use it for is they will customize the list to items that they commonly need to receive from their clients roughly once per year on a client wide basis. And normally they will also use the black check mark to track items they have not yet received and gray check marks to track things they have received. If you'd like, once you've got this information in the system, there's a report section on top of the software with a report wizard. In the very last set of reports here, they are actually based on the checklist items found in the More Info tab. So you can run a report based on black check marks, grayed, and unselected. And when you run this report, it will show you very quickly the information that you're looking for. Next we look at scheduling deadlines for your clients, which is what basically all these tabs here are for at the top of the software. Generally when you're setting up a client, you'll want to begin by setting up their year end. In most cases when you're setting up a client's year end, you're actually working on the year previous. So if you'd like to set up the year previous, first what you'll do is go to the upper left here and tell the program what the year end actually is, so the month and day. Then you'll want to schedule it for 2012 by going to the working year in the upper right changing it back temporarily to 2012 and then clicking the checkbox which will schedule this year end for 2012 here. There are two periods that generally follow the year end and they are found in corporate tax. You'll want to do this while still working in the 2012 season. Head to the corporate tax tab and then click tax deadlines on the left. These top two checkboxes when clicked will schedule the two periods that follow the year end and they will be based off the year end that you just scheduled. Once you've scheduled these in, you can then simply click the year that you're working in and move back to 2013. If for some reason that when you're scheduling a task, you do find that the date is incorrect or you do need to change it because sometimes the dates that follow the year end are a two month instead of a three month period, you can simply just click the due date and change it to what it should be. And the program will remember this change for this one client forever. You'll notice that every other tab is very similar to this. So if we look at HST, Let's say I remove my old example. So if we look at HST, let's say that this client has monthly HST payments. We can click monthly HST. The program will then schedule them for you based on the appropriate deadlines. These items will then appear in the client's file and they will be then scheduled on your task calendar. If any of these dates are incorrect, as I said earlier, you can change these dates to whatever they should be. If you ever need to make a change for the type of payment that's in here, then you can click no payments on the left hand side and confirm you want the items gone. They will be removed from the system and then you can simply pick a different type that you'd like scheduled. One thing to note is after you've finished a task, you'll want to click close in the task to let the program know you have finished with this item. There are two tabs that are a little different from the rest of them in the software. The bookkeeping tab and custom tabs are very different from the rest of them. While they are similar to each other, what's going to happen when you look at your program is both of these sections will have no items to schedule within them by default. What you'll want to do is go into the bookkeeping section for starters and then create the services you'll be scheduling to your clients. Let's do a quick one for example. 
So I click the big green button above the list labeled Add New Bookkeeping Service. Now I'm going to give my service a name. I'm just going to call it Test. If I want my service numbered one through whichever, we'll click the checkbox just below. Now I'm going to tell the program how often it occurs. So is it a daily task, a weekly task, a semi-monthly, -month bike-monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, and annual options? And you'll notice that as you pick different options in year two, the settings below will change to make sure that you're scheduling the right things. So let's say we have a monthly task. I want it once each month, starting in whichever month of the year, due on what day of each month. And then I'll generally want to make sure that I leave the template as not assigned to any of my users, because if you make the template assigned to a user, it does mean that any time you schedule it to a client afterwards, it will automatically go to that user, which you may not want. I'm going to then tell the program how long I roughly think this will take me to complete each of the tasks. You can make this one minute, three hours, an hour and 35, anything that you prefer except for zero minutes. The last checkbox here will then tell the New Year Scheduler, which is built in the program, am I going to reschedule this for you as each year comes around? If you don't want this rescheduled automatically each year, remove the checkbox. The last thing you're going to do is click the Add Tasks button, which will then show you the tasks that you've just created in the window on the right. Confirm that your deadlines are correct by simply just looking at them in the list. And lastly, give the task a name. You'll probably want to save it by the same name as what you actually gave the task itself. It's generally a good idea to do so. It is not necessary that you do, but we find it is best practice. When you click Save, it'll confirm that this has been done. Then you can simply just cancel out of here, and you'll see it appear on your list. Once it's on your list, you can then schedule it to any of the clients in the system. So if we want to schedule Bankrec, for example, I'm going to highlight it in the list and then say assign selected service to this client. The system will give you the option then to say would you like to keep the default settings that you made for your task or would you like to change any of these items last minute for this one particular client. Once you've made your selection and you click OK, the program will schedule them just like every other tab you've seen. You will find the custom tab works exactly the same way. So if we go to the recurring option here in the upper left hand corner, the creator is the exact same thing. The only real difference from here is there's also a single task creator, which is just a quicker way to do either a one-off task or an annual type task. And also, both of these creators have the ability to be saved under any other tab in the system. So for example, let's say that I wanted a T3 slip task in the system. And if we look at the tabs in the program, you'll notice that there are no other tabs that have a T3 slip in the program. So what I'd like is I'd like to have this added to my payroll source section. I'm going to go to the custom section and I'm going to create a single task and call it T3 slip. I'm going to assign it its appropriate deadline and any other settings that I might need. And then from the task type drop down menu, I'm going to tell it I want it to be part of the payroll remittance section because that is the payroll source tab. Once you save this, you'll notice that it'll appear in the custom section, but when you schedule this task, because you've told it to be saved under that particular section, it'll be placed in the appropriate task tab you selected. So if we go to payroll source now, we will see T3 slip is now part of this section. It is now also considered a real payroll task. So if you run searches from your task list in the task section, it will come up as part of the results for payroll. Now the next thing we'd like to point out is that every task has a notify checkbox in the program. By default they will all be blank to let you know that you have not set up the notifications for this particular client. If you'd like to do this, what you can do is go back to the client's info tab and set this up by using the client options button found on the right hand side. This will be set up individually per client and once you're in the client options you're going to go to the auto notifications tab and then highlight the ones here that you'd like to complete. It's fine if you hit select all because it's not going to make you send out notifications for something that does not exist in your program. Once you click OK, the next one that comes up will then ask you how you would like to notify this client. Not every client likes the same method, so you have four different options. They are email, letter, fax, and phone call. If you choose email, when you send the notification out, 
you will see that it will use your default email program, create a new email, and then get that ready for you to send to your client. Fax and letter are generally the same thing. The difference being is that in some cases you do have an electronic fax function. So it will create a document which you can then send to your e-fax. The phone icon will come up with an informational tab that tells you who to contact, what it's about, and their phone number so you can give them a call. As a side note, ClientTrack will not call the client for you. Click finish when you're done and you'll see the program will let you know that it's doing some work. After that, you will then notice the notify checkboxes on this client's file will be filled out. And that's to let you know the auto notifications have been set up for this particular client. Once they have been set up, you will then notice that this particular item found in client communications called the auto notification wizard will come up first thing in the morning for all of your users. This is because everybody should see this information, even though generally one person is responsible for sending these out. If that person is away, people still need to know which notifications have to go out. If you are the person responsible for sending these items out, you simply just click send and it will use the default method that you've chosen to get that out to your client. Other things to note about this section, there is a client software button on the right hand side which actually allows you to add all the individual pieces of software you might use for your clients, including online login accounts. For each item that you add on the left, it will store its own information on the right, so you can keep things like usernames, passwords, versions, account numbers, and any other information that you'd prefer. You can also type your own names for these items, or choose from a drop-down menu of the lists that we have in the program. Other things that you can access from the business client section are things like the document vault, which allow you to create links to folders that contain files for your clients. So for example, if I add a new subfolder to the top category by clicking the green button after selecting the category I want to put beneath, I'm going to tell it where this folder is. Let's pretend that my documents folder is the folder for this client's files. We go into the file system and we tell it where that location is. And then we click OK once you've found your folder. Then you'll confirm your link and it will create this link in the left hand side. You will then notice that it will give you a direct shortcut to every item in that section. So you can then double click the item and open it from here. It saves you the trouble of having to go into your file system and into any subfolders just to get to the files you'd like to see for this client. Note that it is an active system so that if a new file has been added to this folder in future, when you refresh this, a new link will be created to show you that that file exists in that location. And on the flip side, if something has been deleted from this location, you'll see a broken link to let you know that this item that was once here is no longer there. Lastly, you can also access the address book from both business and personal clients. And what it does is it allows you to keep track of your clients in a list fashion as well as group them by any subcategories you might want to create. For more information on the address book, refer to the address book training video. We thank you for spending the time to go through the full tutorial of the business client section. If you have any more questions or need any further assistance with the software, please contact the representatives at ClientTrack and they will be happy to help you.